Uh, good morning, everyone. Good evening, or wherever you are. Um, my name is Vicky. I am the product manager for MSC Nastran, working here at Hexagon. And today um, we are going to talk about um, a feature in MSC Nastran, uh, ACMS, uh, and um, basically how we can achieve faster and more accurate uh, results by leveraging ACMS uh, for our dynamic sons in MSC Nastran. So the first thing we're going to do is actually uh, look at the current approaches. Um, let me just get my laser pointer here. Um, we know that determining the eigenmodes of a structural system is crucial in many applications of MSC Nastron, and we actually um, deploy um, uh, deploy uh, them in solution triple one for generating and solving model frequency responses or in solution 112 uh, sequence of MSC Nastron for creating and solving model transient responses problems and so on, um, along with solution 103, 110, and 200, right? Traditionally, um, users of MSC Nastron have relied on two different approaches in order to solve the problem. Uh, one is the Lanchus method that, uh, that we all know, and the other one is the automated component mode uh, model reduction method uh, in MSC Nastron. The ACMS method is an approximate technique that for large problems can be much, much faster than the Lanchus method. What this means is that it can basically uh, significantly uh, reduce the overall work clock time for any dynamic simulation. So as, as we mentioned, ACMS stands for Automated Component uh, Mode Synthesis, and uh, this is where it stands um, in the overall um, uh, workflow of the simulation. Um, I would like to emphasize that this is not a new feature in MSC Nation. So ACMS was first introduced back in 2001. Uh, so what ACMS basically does is, yeah, it basically breaks down um, a large eigenvalue problem into smaller components, which are then addressed individually. What happens afterwards is that these components are reassembled using a process called component mode synthesis uh, to provide with the um, eigenvalue uh, solution of the entire assembly. Um, since we mentioned component mode synthesis, this is just a review um, of uh, what this is. So um, component mode synthesis is a powerful method for modeling and analyzing um, the dynamic behavior of structures, particularly in the mid and high uh, frequency range. This is a technique that first emerged uh, in the aerospace industry during the 1960s, uh, and it was pioneered by Hertie and Craig Bampton, which we might have all heard about him. There is a method named after him as well. So the necessity for, 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 for component mode synthesis arises from challenges in developing comprehensive finite element models of complex structures, right? These challenges uh, stem from the fact that major subsystems are manufactured in different locations, making it impractical to create unified model from the outset, or uh, we have hardware constraints. That's usually the case that can hinder the ability to, to run a large model of the entire structure in a single uh, computer run. Um, this is the, the problem uh, still, to, still today um, because models are getting bigger, so hardware constraints are always present. So the solution lies in the CMS approach, which basically involves breaking down the structure into discrete components, as we mentioned. These components are analyzed individually to determine their respective uh, modes. And then the modes of these components are synthesized, allowing us to, to understand the complete behavior of the entire structure. What this process does is basically um, enabling us to um, tackle efficiently um, the complexities of a dynamic analysis run in, in our real-world engineering uh, problems where Lanchus becomes impractical. So building upon the component mode synthesis process, um, this is the practical uh, implementation, which actually lies in uh, three key steps, as you see over here. As we mentioned, step one uh, actually um, uh, involves the individual reduction of its component or substructure. And this reduction yields a set of boundary matrices that uh, provide a representation of the structural behavior as observed by the rest of the system. 
Um, then in, in step two, the boundary matrices from one or more of the components are integrated, and the integration can take uh, the form of uh, can take the form of forming assemblies, which may in turn be reduced to boundary representation. Right. Alternatively, they can be combined into um, a residual um, uh, structure. As a supplementary step in the process, step three um, offers the option of recovering data on the interior grids of the substructure. Um, notably, and as, as I mentioned in the previous slide, one widely utilized CMS method is the Greg Banton method, uh, which constitutes a fixed um, interface uh, CMS approach. So, ACMS, of course, this is a pr proprietary version of, uh, of, of uh, Hexagon and MSC Nation. Um, uh, proves to be a very, very effective um, method for analyzing uh, um, um, systems with a substantial number of uh, vibrational modes. Um, I would say that uh, ACMS excels in tasks that call for a limited set of vibration modes uh, in exceptionally large models as well, uh, which is usually um, the case uh, nowadays. So we're going to see um, uh, in the next few slides what's the decision tree and how do we decide on which method to choose and for which case. Now, to achieve optimal performance, uh, it's not just the method, but of course we have to decide on multiple parameters. So it's the method selection, memory usage, parallel settings, and of course hardware. Taking all of this into account is what's going to give us an optimal uh, run, right? And of course the model feature, it's, it's very important to notice that one is that the model features can also affect the um, ACMS performance. So uh, why use ACMS? Uh, we know that uh, um, automotive analysis requirements and of course aerospace are, as well are increasingly going to higher and higher uh, frequency, meaning that as the frequency range uh, is getting higher, we're increasing the cutoff frequency for eigenvalue extraction and for cap capturing those responses up to 1000 or 2000 hertz uh, uh, 1000 hertz let's say it's important to compute the model space up to 2000 or 3000 hertz right so this is something that's going to result in a very very large model space which may maybe consists of 30000 um, eigenvalues or more now, of course, we do know that uh, as the meshes are getting refined, we have more and more uh, degrees of freedom. And at the same time, we're increasing the cutoff frequency as well, as we just discussed. So more or less, I would say the Lanchos method has practical uh, limitations. So um, although um, Lanchos forms the basis for eigenvalue extraction, and uh, uh, um, it, it has a lot of practical uh, limitations, especially when we're talking about uh, uh, large models with a uh, uh, large number of uh, degrees of freedom. So uh, fast eigenvalue solvers like ACMS give tremendous speed up um, and we actually have the option to uh, with ACMS to control uh, accuracy uh, as, as, as well uh, with of course a trade-off in, in computational uh, time, right? So um, the Lanchos method, I would say, uh, strategically focuses its calculations solely on, on the routes that have been um, uh, requested. Then it re leverages term sequence logic to um, uh, discover all the, re the relevant modes. So it's generally faster when uh, we require a few modes, maybe less than 20, and it's the recommended choice in such cases. Um, conversely, in cases where a significant number of modes um, is required or, or a limited set of modes with a very, very large, uh, very large system. Um, we can go to ACMS since it's a more advantageous uh, approach and it's much more um, efficient. Um, so we consider a model large usually um, when it's from uh, 10 million uh, degrees of freedom uh, and above. Mm. The ACMS interface, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, all we need to do is basically add uh, domains over ACMS, um, as I'm highlighting over here uh, in, in our national input deck. Okay, so we add um, domains over ACMS in the executive control uh, uh, section. And for uh, version, I think 2017 onwards, the default version is new, so we don't even have to define uh, those uh, these parentheses over here. 
Now, uh, during the latest ACMS uh, versions, we have consistently worked towards enhancing uh, the capabilities of ACMS. Uh, starting from version 2017.1 onwards, uh, the new version, as I just mentioned, is set as default, um, and it basically incorporates the utilization of a variable uh, depth binary uh, tree. So in, con in contrast to the previous ACMS version, which relied on a full binary tree, as you see on the left-hand side uh, on this slide over here, um, uh, this one actually posed limitation in, in handling parallelism with unbalanced trees. So now with the new approach, um, we deployed a variable depth binary tree um, in order to enable a more effective decomposition of problems, particularly uh, those that have a significant uh, um, imbalances. Now, what does this offer from a practical standpoint and from a user perspective standpoint is that uh, um, we have a significant reduction in the overall uh, work clock time, uh, which basically enables us to uh, do more simulations in, in, less, uh, in less time. Um, it's also useful to mention that ACMS supports, of course, external super elementation workflows, and it can also be uh, utilized uh, for um, Adams MNF uh, files. Of course, the, the new ACMS method leverages uh, as well dynamic scheduling uh, for parallel execution, uh, which basically enhances the uh, performance with multiple uh, threads. So in most scenarios, uh, when we deploy uh, a substantial number of parallel threads, um, the dynamic option that we have now as default um, is going to provide um, a superior speed up compared to the static counterpart that we had in the past. So with this dynamic scheduling approach, um, we can automatically uh, adapt the computational task to parallel SMP threads uh, and ensure that we have um, consistent engagement of the multiple threads throughout um, the whole computation. So um, this as a result minimizes the parallel uh, load uh, imbalance. Of course, as the load uh, imbalance diminishes, the parallel scalability improves, and this, um, as a result, leads to uh, the enhanced overall uh, performance that we are discussing. Um, so this is what we see over here um, on this uh, on this uh, figure: the processing of a set of domains by four parallel uh, threads uh, using dynamic scheduling, uh, where the domain is set to run once its parent domains have completed the processing. And of course, this is this is uh, the default. So this is a little bit of background on on, on what happens when ACMS uh, is run. Of course, uh, uh, a question that always comes up, and it's something that uh, you know uh, we always recommend is the the parallel processing uh, uh, setup. How do we set this up? What what should we use, and so on. So. Employing multiple cores, of course, significantly enhances the performance of uh, the eigenvalue analysis and ACMS. Uh, and ACMS supports both um, what we call shared memory parallel and distributed memory parallel. Uh, shared memory parallel is configured by specifying the maximum number of, uh, of processors um, uh, 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 that, uh, that we, we want to designate. Um, and in certain scenarios, we can, of course, combine SMP parallelization with uh, DMP, where um, the SMP uh, keyword defines the number of threads per process utilized in the simulation. Um, on the other hand, the distributed memory uh, parallel or the DMP keyword that uh, we see over here determines the number of processors that uh, we deploy uh, in order to obtain the solution for the simulation. The process can be located on the same node or distributed across multiple nodes, right? So both SMP and DMP settings can be specified either in the command line or within the, the input, uh, input file. Uh, just as an example over here, um, when, we, uh, when we use both DMP and SMP, uh, the SMS method is going to leverage all the available CPU uh, cores during the model uh, reduction. Uh, and if the analysis is run over here with DMP um, equals to N and SMP equals to M, then the model reduction computations will be conducted using N times M uh, number of cores. 
Um, dense models, they actually demonstrate excellent uh, scalability uh, uh, with uh, um, SMP. Of course, DMP may offer slightly uh, uh, superior performance, um, and it can also be used to distribute uh, the workload across nodes um, in order to, to ensure um, optimal utilization of memory on each node. Uh, all this, I would say we have a lot of case studies on the HPC um, user's guide of MSC National, where we actually uh, illustrate um, the different use cases and how uh, SMP and uh, uh, different configurations of SMP and, and DMP uh, can impact the various uh, uh, models of different sizes, different nature, and so on. So, uh, HPC user guide is shipped with uh, the MSC Nation, um, basic MSC Nation, and the, the documentation. So, um, I highly encourage you to take a look um, if you want um, to see. Uh, what's the best option for different solution sequences and different model sizes and so on. This is an example again taken from the user's guide um, and uh, um, it basically uh, illustrates the decision tree for a model analysis, right? Um, what the user, how the user should, should go about um, uh, uh, a problem and how to decide which solver to use and uh, what options we should set. Now, um, um, uh, one, one more, uh, one, one uh, other thing that we did uh, for ACMS uh, in, in MSC National version 2023.2 uh, that came out a few months back um, is to actually um, uh, leverage ACMS to compute uh, directly uh, operational deflection uh, shapes in, in dynamic sim simulation, right? Um, more often than not, there is a need to obtain results for the entire model or at least for a significant number of, of, of grids of our models in an NVH analysis at uh, uh, certain frequencies um, instead of using a, a small set of uh, specific uh, grid points. Um, this is the concept of uh, ODS um, that some of you might already be familiar about, which essentially represents the full displacements of the model at a particular uh, frequency. So um, while uh, ACMS can accomplish this, it entails recovering the complete eigenvectors, a process that can be um, quite demanding in terms of time and resources, right? So uh, an alternative approach would be to, of course, go to um, a direct uh, uh, frequency uh, response solution uh, uh, 108 in a separate uh, one to do a direct solution, but this also can be exceedingly uh, time consuming, particularly for large uh, large models. So um, what we did in the latest versions is we introduced uh, um, a novel approach that basically leverages ACMS, leverages ACMS to retrieve uh, full model results without the necessity of obtaining the entire eigenvectors. And we have implemented enhancements to the peak out. This is an existing functionality as well in uh, MSC Nastron. We're going to see about it. We basically, it allows you to automatically, allows Nastron to automatically identify the frequencies at which, uh, or the peak frequencies at which ODS results should be uh, recovered. So this is an integrated approach. There is no need to define new subcases, whatever, in order to extract the ODS, ODS results. And of course, we can um, obtain uh, um, uh, um, uh, results for, for, for various, uh, various types of results, like displacements, velocities, accelerations, and whatever you see uh, over here. Now, the frequencies for the full results generation can be determined in two different ways. We can use sets with uh, user-specified frequencies, or as I, as I mentioned, we can use the uh, pick out option of MSC Nastran uh, for uh, full automation and allow Nastran to identify those for us. So there are three different uh, uh, use cases over here. Um, we can have, we can extract the S's for a set of frequencies without the pick out command. Uh, or with the pick out uh, command and with or without uh, uh, grid participation factors as well. Uh, the results are output to the standard Nastran files. Um, and in the case of OP2 output, uh, what we do uh, to facilitate usage is we actually uh, write out the results in a separate OP2 file um, uh, with the, the, the name, job name, underscore um, ODS. And uh, we enabled the option to actually direct participation factors to the separate uh, uh, OP2 uh, file uh, as well. Finally, 
um, some uh, guidelines over here um, in order to use ACMS. Um, as we said, um, the interface is very straightforward. Um, we say domains over ACMS, but of course, depending on the type of application we're doing, uh, the solution sequence, our model, we have to ensure that we set uh, optimal uh, settings and we approach the problem in a holistic way, right? So uh, we want to make sure we have enough memory uh, to solve the problem. And we want to make sure we set uh, uh, the right uh, parallel uh, settings and, and so on. So um, we, of course, recommend uh, to all the users to um, utilize version 2021 onwards. Uh, we have a plethora of new features that are, are coming in with every uh, new national version uh, from 2021 onwards with reduced memory requirements for ACMS, better run times, and so on. So we highly encourage you to uh, utilize um, uh, version 2021 onwards and of course for those of you that are in much much older um, versions of MSC Nation um, it's great to use uh, uh, version 2017.1 onwards that uses uh, the new um, ACMS method and not uh, benchmark uh, with a version prior to that because you're going to see of course a lot of um, uh, uh, changes in, in run times and so on. Um, for the memory requirements, uh, there are two options. The first option would be to use solve equals SOTO. Um, this is um, an option that um, we have released in MSC Nastern, which basically allows the let's MSC Nastern to decide the optimal um, uh, uh, the optimal user settings for you. So basically, um, it's going to decide the number of uh, of uh, uh, parallel threads. It's going to decide uh, the memory uh, given your 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 problem size, given the hardware you're running on, and so on. So um, Solvi equals Zora is a great option, and we always suggest that so that you don't have to uh, manually uh, go around and, and play with uh, the Nastron settings. So let Nastron decide things for you by setting uh, solve equals auto and it's going to uh, pick out the, the best the optimal settings for the run um, now if we want to set things uh, in i would say i put it in quotes manual way uh, then uh, what we can do uh, we have like some uh, best practices that you see over here and we say okay for solution 103 or for a transient analysis we usually suggest to use a shared memory parallel of 16 uh, and for frequency response analysis, uh, a DMP equals four and an SMP equals four. For memory settings, um, we want to calculate the memory amount, which is going to be the minima, the minimum either of um, this is usually um, X it's recommended to be around 300 gigabytes or uh, 0 0.7, the physical uh, um, uh, amount you have uh, available on the hardware you are running. Uh, for high frequency, we always say uh, use memory um, equals uh, max. We always suggest to go into um, a large memory systems in order to ensure that you have enough uh, RAM in order to run your problem. Uh, one unique thing about ACMS is that you can also um, uh, use it uh, for poor elastic analysis, for PEM analysis. So for PEM analysis, again, uh, we require um, large memory systems and uh, PEM, I would say, is uh, is memory um, intensive. So uh, these are the settings that uh, we actually uh, recommend to use when we uh, want to combine ACMS uh, with for elastic analysis for MSC NASH. Um, a final thing over here, which is super, super important, has to do with uh, the use of AppFact. Um, AppFact is um, a parameter that we have intentionally uh, exposed on ACMS. Um, in order to control uh, the accuracy of the solver. And what does that mean? Um, as you increase the, the, the value of AppFact, um, and especially uh, for those users that you know, are, are subsequently doing um, uh, uh, fatigue uh, analysis, so they wanna make sure that the stress concentration areas we have a high accuracy. As we increase the AppFact value, our results become more accurate, but of course there is a trade-off uh, in computational time. So uh, the user has the option to actually uh, specify and select uh, the level of accuracy uh, needed for ACMS. Usually we suggest that like when we're doing a solution one on 12, when we know that we're gonna uh, perform a fatigue workflow uh, down the road, uh, we set up 
to five uh, so that we ensure that our uh, results as, uh, are accurate as, as they should. For uh, monthly preparation, uh, we want to make sure, of course, um, uh, to uh, uh, that we have a functioning model. And 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 what do I mean by that? Uh, we have a model that, of course, does not it's not problematic. You know, uh, things are running fine. We don't have any geometry issues or things that you know would otherwise result in a uh, in a fatal uh, run, right? So. Um, we can use some already existing and leverage, I would say, already existing functionality of MSC Nastran, like uh, FemCheck or GroundCheck, um, in order to ensure that uh, to ensure that uh, uh, the model integrity and uh, um, um, and then actually perform uh, uh, the ACMS run. So performing grounding checks to expose unintentional constraints or um, um, specifying, I would say, model checking options at the start of the run, like like the fan set here to to check uh, for for RBE elements with uh, unconnected uh, uh, grids is, is paramount in order to ensure that we don't end up in in a fatal um, error down the road. Um, to avoid massless mechanism uh, issues. Uh, we do have uh, two different options, two different, I would say, algorithms that efficiently detect the massless mechanisms. However, uh, what we always suggest is to use that with caution as it might mask uh, modeling issues. Um, more often than not, uh, we have seen cases that um, um, the run goes through, and this is this is the intention, uh, because some things, um, even though unconnected, you know, they were identified and fixed automatically by the algorithm, but um, this is not what uh, the user uh, uh, wanted in the first place. So um, usually what we say is turn it off, and you can use those switches to turn off um, uh, massless mechanism uh, checks fix modeling issues or in the preprocessor of your choice, go and check for unconnected assemblies and all the Nastran checks that uh, you should. And then um, after after the model is um, uh, is uh, is fine and we know that uh, there are no, I would say, uh, modeling issues, then we can go back um, and, and run ACMS, ACMS as is. So these are how to do like with the best practices and how to, um, uh, I would say, use ACMS. And of course, we do have a dedicated um, um, user's guide um, that is shipped with um, um, with the basic Nastran documentation that pertains only uh, to ACMS. So you can see that lots of details there and on, on how to use ACMS, um, what are the best practices, all the decision trees and and, and, and so on. Um, as a summary, and of course some new points over here, is that um, uh, integrating ACMS in, into um, a workflow is easy, uh, and it comes bundled as a standard feature within uh, MSC Nastran. Of course, this eliminates the need for, for separate installation. Um, there's nothing that you need to do. Um, it's readily uh, accessed of, uh, uh, the cell, of the self, and of course it reduces the workload on your IT department, who would otherwise have to manage and maintain separate software solely for the uh, fast again value extraction. Uh, furthermore, with its new version, we want to ensure that we have an improved and more efficient ACMS uh, to alleviate any uh, uh, concerns about version compatibility or, or the need to, to, to wait for a compatible um, uh, uh, um, eigensolver as well. ACMS also ensures that uh, the results are consistent and reliable across versions, uh, and um, uh, um, uh, we can uh, handle um, even the most, I would say, extensive and intricate uh, models. Uh, we have a user-friendly interface. Um, it's, it's a single keyword, domain solver ACMS. As I told you, if you want to expose some additional parameters, you can use that parenthesis there and say, for example, at fact equals five, but all of that can be um, determined in a, in a single line. And that's all it takes to basically activate a CMS um, in, uh, in Iran. Um, of course, uh, ACMS extends um, its applicability uh, to uh, support uh, MNF file generations and dynamic reductions, model solutions, and even fluid eigenvalues. And of course, this is what makes um, ACMS um, such a powerful tool um, in, in a wide range, I would say, of uh, dynamic analysis um, uh, scenarios. 
Great. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to reach out um, to me. Um, as I said, um, if you have any questions or if you want to say something in particular, be more than happy uh, uh, to help you out. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, have a good rest of your day. And thank you for attending.